Welcome back to the last episode of this The Pandemic series. I just wanted to close this with a promise and a blessing that we can get from whatever situation that we're in today. And I hope that you've been listening to the, um, to the previous lessons and to the previous devotionals, and I hope that becomes a blessing to you. But today, it's even more blessing when you find out what will be the end result of this. Just stay put and listen to the song, and I'll be right back. Welcome back. Now, today's episode, we are going to talk about the two coronas. Now, the question that we may ask ourselves, are we going to live a normal life the way, the same way we lived our life before the pandemic, before the coronavirus? If so, when? How? What have we learned about life from this pandemic experience? What I've learned is you will either have one of two things, whether a coronavirus or a crown of life. How did I get to this conclusion? Well, corona in English is translated crown. So here we have two crowns, the coronavirus or the crown of life. Now you pick your choice. Here's the thing though, your preparation determines what choice you've made. You either prepare for the coronavirus or prepare for the crown of life. Now, let me just ask you this question, or maybe you're, you're asking this question yourself. How can I prepare for the crown of life? Now, let me give you a text in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. And it reads, Let not your heart be troubled, Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Friends, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. And he told his disciples, Don't let your heart be troubled. Jesus said, before he left heaven, he gave these encouraging words to his disciples. He gave this encouraging uh, message to his disciples that he will come back again. He said, I will go to, to the place where I will prepare a place for you, and I will receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Friends, this is one of the greatest promises the Bible has ever given to the people of God. And even to our days today, that God is going to prepare a place for you and I. 
So here, the Bible gives us a perspective that He is coming again. But when? Nobody knows. The Bible is silent about it. But what we know is in what we found in Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, and it says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according, uh, according as his work shall be. So here, at least we know that God is coming, Jesus is coming quickly in Revelation 12, uh, 20, 22, 12. I come quickly. And the thing is, He's going to bring with Him a reward. A reward who deserve to be given to. Right? What is that reward? And then who gets that reward? What is that reward? Now go with me to Colossians chapter 3 verse 22 Colossians chapter 3 verse 22 it says knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of what inheritance for ye serve the Lord Jesus Christ so for those who serve Christ will definitely receive that reward and what is that reward the reward of inheritance the reward of inheritance but who are those that will receive the reward go with me to James chapter 1 verse 12 these are they that what? Serve God. Now, how do they serve? It says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Now, the reward that Christ is going to bring is the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So, friends, here are they. Those who receive the reward are those that endures temptation. That reward is the crown of life, or what we say, a corona of life. Now, it is a promise for you and I that Christ is going to return again with a reward, with Him, and He's going to bring us back with Him where he, wherever He is. So it is a promise that God have for those that, want, that loved Him. The text is that the crown of life is the promise for them that love Him. Now, what about love? How can we show love to God? For God loved us. That's why the song says, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. But the thing is, how can we show love to God? How? Because it says that the promise is for those that love Him. But how do we know that you love Him? Now, in John 14, verse 15, John 14, verse 15, it says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Friends, the, 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 the only way that we can show love to God is by what? By keeping the commandments of God. This is an expression of that love towards God. So we can't say that we love, we love God and then we don't keep His commandment. The Bible says if we love Him, we need to keep His commandments. If we say that we love God and we don't keep His commandments, the Bible says that we are liars. We basically are sinning saying that and doing that. So yes, there's a reward given to those that obey the commandments of God. In short, the crown of life are for those that love God, meaning are for those that obey His commandments. So what else can, we, what else can the obedient receive from God? What else can they receive as a promise? In Revelation chapter 20, 22, verse 14, Revelation 22, verse 14, it says, Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and they may enter in through the gates in the city. So not only that they will receive the crown of life, but they will also have access to the tree of life. Remember, in the Garden of Eden, there's a tree of life that gives life to them, to Adam and Eve. And the same life that will give to us when we enter into the heavenly gates. Friends, in John 14, 1-3, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Friends, that's where Jesus is. That's where Jesus would be taking His people and that is the kingdom of God. The city 
and the the the, the city with 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 a the tree of life in the middle friends how can we see how can we receive the crown of life is when we love god meaning when we obey god obey who obey god and to keep his commandment friends today the choice is yours the choice is yours god cannot grab you by the collar and drag you to obey him and force you to obey him that's what satan does but god gives you a choice gives you an option gives you an alternative look which one would you choose would you choose the coronavirus that leads to death or the crown of life or the corona of life the crown of life that will lead you to eternal life friends what would you rather have what would you rather have if you want the crown of life obey god today as joshua said choose you this day whom you will serve but as for me and my house we will serve the Lord. I hope and pray that you choose to serve the Lord today. You choose to obey, that you choose the crown of life rather than the coronavirus. This is my message uh, to you today. Choose God. Blessings, and we'll see you again next time.